said a lot of stuff, Chris. And let me just start with, and I didn't drag him for this in the article I wrote yesterday, but why is his standard of success winning another MVP and not winning another Super Bowl? I, I, I hear you there. I know. It, it, it does you know, seem like a I, I, I comment. I get that. But I, I also think he's trying to just kind of set a bar to go, hey, like, I still think I could play a level that's really damn good. And he's trying to say, you know, MVP to be that that type of level. You're right. But I, I get what you're saying there. And, you know, it, it, I, I understand the dissection of that comment. And remember when he decided to play in 2021 after he entered the weekend before training camp 50-50 and the sports books took down all the Packers-based futures bets because they were freaked out that he might retire. He pushed for Randall Cobb to be brought back, a guy that the Packers deliberately let go. They traded to bring him back. And now he's got a whole list of guys he wants back. I mean, that's his, that's his ransom note to Brian Gutekunst. These are the guys I want. And if those guys are re- basically if those guys are re-signed before the start of free agency, I'll be inclined to come back. If they're not, eh, maybe I'm going to want to go somewhere else. And yesterday I got the sense, Chris, for the first time that he would entertain playing for another team. It, it I thought like he that. went through that last year. Agreed. The metaphor I used for last year was he was going to go skydiving. Damn it. I've been talking about going skydiving for years. I'm finally going skydiving. I've got my parachute on. I got the goggles pulled down. I got the helmet on. The door to the plane is open. I am standing here ready to jump. Nah, I don't think I'm going to. I felt like that's what happened last year. And I still continue to be convinced that they hired Nathaniel Hackett in Denver because they thought they were getting Aaron Rodgers. Because what did they do the same day that Rodgers said he was staying with the Packers? Yeah. They entered into a deal to trade for Russell Wilson the same day. Right. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. These things are not related in any way, shape, or form. Baloney. So maybe he's back up in the plane again. Maybe he's got the parachute back on. Maybe he's getting ready to pull the goggles down and look for a place he can jump. That's part of his deliberation. How could it not be? If your choices are stay with the Packers, retire, or play for someone else, those are the three. That's yeah, it. Yeah. It isn't some vast array of choices. It's it. It's not like one of the, you know go to one of those restaurants with a big ass menu. It's like what the hell am I going to eat? It's breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's it's Packers retire or someone else. And now within someone else, who that's part of it. But I got the impression that he's willing to at least entertain it. Yeah, I I, I felt the same way. I did, and you know I think there's been some chatter out there. Um, I don't know. Maybe his evaluation of the team is a little bit like you were talking about, where he's not sure it's going to be a reload, and they might actually, you know, be a little bit more on. Whoa, we're just going to flip the team over. I don't want to say rebuild. They're not there. They they still got a lot of solid good pieces, uh, but you know maybe that's the uncertainty he's having there. Uh, again, I understand him wanting his guys to to a degree. You know, Bakhtiari, Tunyon, Cobb. Who else did he mention there? Those are three that I, I remember off the top of my head. You know, but also Mercedes gotta, Lewis. Oh, Mercedes Lewis, Randall right. Cobb, right. David Bakhtiari, Robert Tunyon, Alan Lazar. Oh, those Lazar. Guys yeah, he's got he's got to be careful too. Just like okay, yeah, we we want to make you comfortable, but uh, I mean, again, again, are we going to compromise the football team into making you feel comfortable? It it's. I know he likes Randall Cobb, but Randall Cobb is it it's it's about over. I don't know what else to say. And you know, those times where you're shaking your head and you're mad that no one's open, I wanna go, well yeah, you got an aging guy working in the middle of the field who can't get open. He's your best friend and he's in there, but he can't get open. So uh I know it, it, and where this is different to me too than like maybe the Tom Brady leaving New England type of thing, of course is the contract situation. And all of that. And then, of course, you're going to have to come up with a trade compensation and then also give him a huge amount of money, you know, where, uh, you know, where Brady made it easy for teams. I know we didn't have the trade, but he wasn't looking to be making 50 or 60 million dollars a year. He just wanted to be paid. Pay me good enough to where, hey, it's, um, you know, I'm making good money. I'm not trying to break the football team, but let's go forward. That's going to make things hard as well. Oh, yeah, we're going to trade a bunch of picks for a guy who's making $60 million a year and then next year might hold us hostage and tell us he's going to retire. That's one where, again, I just that's going to be a rare spot, and I don't know where that happens, and uh, there's a lot of things to figure out here as far as that situation is concerned. And that's what's fascinating here, the possibility that the Packers 
may have to pay some of that $60 million to facilitate a trade. And maybe they would because if they would kind of like to move on to Jordan Love and the alternative is Aaron Rodgers says, I'm just going to stay put and you're going to pay me $60 million, maybe you pay him $15, 20 to go and the new team pays 40 and you pick up whatever you get by way of trade compensation. But you're right. This is far different than Tom Brady. When Tom Brady became a free agent, it was a $25 million contract. Right, right. And I don't think he was making much more than that this year. No, I don't He's think so. He's not asking for huge amounts. Aaron Rodgers is on the books for $60 million, nearly $60 million, just south of it, fully guaranteed for 2023. That's a factor, too. Who's going to want him? And when you consider just the stuff he said yesterday, the idea that he's going to walk through the door with some demands and he's going to try to take over. Are there going to be coaches and general managers out there that embrace that? Yeah, I know. Maybe there'll be some that are sufficiently desperate. Maybe. Maybe there'll be an owner that'll say, we'll do whatever we have to do. We have to have this guy. But I just think from the standpoint of what he brings to the team, Tom Brady, I think, brings a lot more revenue potential than Aaron Rodgers. Now, Aaron Rodgers would sell a ton of jerseys. I mean, if Rodgers would go to the the Raiders, could you imagine that silver and black 12 Rodgers jersey? My right. goodness. But then they don't retire jerseys, so they would go ahead and, and uh, issue 12 to him. Uh, you know, I, I assume. And Brady, same thing if he would go there. But I, I just think you're right. It's more complicated. It's far more complicated than it would be for Tom Brady. Tom Brady's going to have the right to pick his next team no matter what. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, if he wants out and they work out a trade – it's, it's going to be dicey, it's going to be delicate, and there may not be a team out there that is ready to make the investment. Because, and look, maybe maybe Aaron Rodgers has a chip on his shoulder next year and he plays like he did in 21 and 22, um, or in 20 and 21, excuse me. But the 22 version, you saw some things that made you think, definitely, you know, guy's going to be 40 soon, and maybe maybe there's a little... And I know he gets, he gets, he gets pissy about that, but... I didn't think he he was as high end dominant as he'd been in twenty and twenty one. No, I know you're right. We had, we had too many, right? You know, Tuesday conversations, middle of the week conversations this year where we just went, "What, Aaron Rodgers? Like, what what was he doing? How did he miss that throw? Why didn't he make that throw? Look at this pack of plays we put together. Whoa, people are open. I mean, it, for me, it was without question the worst year of his career. It was, you know, and I know there were some things there with the team that weren't perfect, but it was, we saw little inklings of it at the end of the 2021 season, and it came right, filtered right through to the to the regular season this year of just, yeah, jittery in the pocket, you know, check down Charlie a little bit too much. Wait, why are you looking at the rush? You're protected. There's people open down the middle of the field. Wait, you did throw the ball down the middle of the field? Ooh, well, it was off target. It didn't quite seem like it had the steam that it usually does. We saw that in the last game, a few throws where we were just like, what? Man, he underthrew that by 10 yards. He underthrew that by 15 yards, right? So it was not a great year by him. And then, Mike, I mean, again, where, where are those spots that, you know, we could even just loosely talk about right now, right? Like Indianapolis. Okay, yeah, hey, they need a quarterback. Are they really going to go down that route once again? Like, hey, let's get the one-year guy. I don't think so, right? L yeah, L let's get the one-year guy right. one year too late. <laughs> I don't think they're going to do exactly. that Exactly. So you look at them. You know, again, uh, Houston, I don't think he's going to want to go to Houston no matter what. If they paid him $160 million, you go, I don't want to do that. Um, uh, the Jets, would they trade for him? I, you know, again, I, I'm just looking at just things that are just a, are a possibility at all to even start a conversation here. The Raiders one, I hear you. I think that's one that makes sense. Um, Atlanta, would they use him as a bridge quarterback? Uh, I mean, it, it's it's few and far between. I guess we can get into Washington with that conversation. Uh, I, I think that's probably where we're at with that. Uh, I don't see Carolina and him going there and them wanting to do that. I, I, I would think that they want to start getting into, let's find a quarterback that's going to be here for a substantial amount of time, kind of like the Colts. So I don't know. Anybody else jump out to you there? I I think that's all of them. Right? I mean, yeah, I'm scanning through them in my brain. I mean, the 49ers, that's a team that, remember, a couple of years ago, he wanted to be traded to the 49ers. Sure. He thought he was going to be traded to the 49ers. They called the day of the draft. That yep. was what kicked up that whole mess in the 21 draft, almost like 
he waited deliberately one year because they turned his life upside down by drafting Jordan Love. He waited until the first day of the draft to to drop that turd in the punch bowl and create that. that it was m- months of acrimony and confusion. You know, last year he put it all to bed before the start of free agency. 21 was when it was the protracted week after week, what's he going to do? And yeah. this year I think we'll have, a de- we'll have a decision, we'll have an answer by the middle of March because whether he's staying, whether he's leaving, he's not going to have it hover over himself or anyone else. So I expect he'll make a decision here fairly quickly. And if he's going to be heading to another team, there's going to be a lot of stuff that has to happen behind the scenes. And the more stuff that happens behind the scenes, the greater the chance we're going to catch wind of exactly it. How about, right. did you mention the Titans? Oh, the Titans no. are one, too. Yeah, maybe, right. Maybe. You're right. You're right. You know, depending on what they want to do with Ryan Tannehill there and all that. Yeah, I, I hear you there. There's some sen- That makes some sense as well. And you've got the relationship between Mike Vrabel and Matt LaFleur where they could maybe work something out. Not that it would even be at their level because, you know, Brian Gutekunst in the front office is going to be making that decision. But I could see Vrabel having an off-the-record conversation with LaFleur about trying to work with Rodgers, because that would be that would be fun. How about, the, how about the Patriots if they move on from Mac Jones? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. How about Aaron Rodgers wearing number 12 in New England? How about that? <laughs> I don't think that – that might be the one place where he couldn't do that. They'd be like, wait, that's Tommy's number. Go pack your car somewhere else and get another jersey, all right? I think that's more how that goes down. <laughs> Hey, hey, Chris, one more for you before we break. They're telling me to break, but we know what the Dolphins are saying, and we've said actions speak louder than words. Right. If Stephen Ross thought he could get Aaron Rodgers, hey, would Stephen would Stephen Ross hey. stop and ponder the possibility of Aaron Rodgers we, with Mike McDaniel? I, it, it, that's another good one, Mike. It's another good one. It, it, you know, again, depending on where it goes with Tua, but that one would fancy, I think, a guy like Rodgers where he'd go, what? I'll go there. I'll play with those freaking guys that got four rockets up their ass. I can throw RPOs as good as Tua. Actually, I can do it better. Have you seen me? I got the quickest release in the history of football, and he was doing it all year long this year anyways. That, that's a good thought there too, Mike. So we, we hashed out a few teams that could maybe be in the running for Rodgers if he decides to go that way. New Florida man, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> that would be something. One of his various hairstyles over the past few years would fit that that vibe. His his Nick Cage Con Air arrival to training camp, I think, would fit very well. Florida, although Miami's not quite the same thing, but yeah, that would be that would be something. And that's one of the things he's got to ponder as he makes his decision for what he's going to do in 2023. And look, the NFL is more fun with these personalities in it. Even though we just mercilessly rip Tom Brady, it's more fun with him in it than not. The NFL is more fun with Aaron Rodgers in it than not. We will miss them when they're gone, and maybe they won't be gone. Maybe they'll both be back next year. It sure seemed like they'd both be gone at one point in October. Maybe they'll both be back. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.